We have some experience with the virus. We've known about it for almost 40 years now since it was first discovered. Um, but it's only caused a handful of outbreaks, and these have been high consequence. They've gotten a lot of media attention. They've caused numerous fantastical you know, movies and some really good books to be written about them. My name is Christopher Morris, and I'm the Associate Director of the Center for Experimental Infectious Disease Research at LSU. Within our Center for Experimental Infectious Disease Research, we have uh, some higher level biocontainment suites, and so Biological Safety Laboratory Level 3 is part of our facility. We do not do level four or Ebola research at LSU. We don't have complete understanding of where this virus comes from, what causes those outbreaks to happen. Uh, the best thing we have is an understanding in general of how to stop those outbreaks, which is to stop the person-to-person -person transmission. Being afraid of, of the Ebola virus as someone living here in the United States, it's, I, I've seen it, there's a, there's a lot of people feeling this way, but we really do have to put this in the context. Unless you're having direct contact with an Ebola patient, really during their symptoms phase, and that's when they're infectious, uh, you're not going to have any, any appreciable risk of getting Ebola. Um, and so this is what we've seen with the, with the patients that recently came in from, uh, from West Africa. Uh, their close contacts did not become infected, but some of the caregivers unfortunately did. So there's a lot of concern about people that, that fl end up flying with someone who later turns out to be an Ebola case. It is a very scary thing. You think about all those people sneezing and coughing on planes, and it gets everybody's blood pressure up. Uh, and so now we have a, a highly deadly virus in the mix. Uh, in general, I'd say it's probably not something to be wildly concerned about. If you find you're on a plane with someone who ends up having Ebola, you are going to be contacted and you are going to be put under surveillance. The data we have right now suggests that it's not a terribly infectious um, situation to be on a plane with someone like this. There was a case that flew from West Africa to Nigeria. He was actually in a very severe state of disease uh, and no one on that plane became infected. We aren't seeing anything in the outbreak to suggest there's any sort of significant role for um, you know, upper respiratory involvement and, and transmission by coughing or sneezing. It's certainly not airborne. We'd be seeing a wildly different tra uh, transmission paradigm if that was the case. It is not the flu. It is not as, an, as easily transmitted as some of the common cold. And so you really do have to have some direct contact with this virus and with the body fluids of someone who's expressing symptoms to get infected. Why did I choose viruses uh, for my career's work? They are fascinating to me because they have such a little bit of genomic material to work with, and yet they are fantastically efficient, obviously, in perpetuating themselves and completing their life cycles. Um, so they don't have a whole bunch of different genes they can swap in and out for the most part. Uh, they don't have a lot of things they can turn on and off to evade, avoid, and infect. Um, and yet they still accomplish it. And so they are masters of efficiency, I would say.